Hello again everyone. Um, today I wanted to show you a little program, another little program that I've been using and uh, only just recently started using it but it's a handy little program. And uh, so once, you know, every so often when you're using Linux at some point you will probably find that you'll need to compile a package um, from source. You need to do this for any but any reason really. You know, you need a the latest version, an extra feature that wasn't compiled in the binary that's provided for your distribution, that sort of thing. Uh, any number of reasons. You know, again, yeah, latest version, extra features, or you just want to try it out for the fun of it. You prefer to compile from source because you get to see the source code and compile only what you need. That sort of thing. Of all those sorts of reasons. I suppose if you're using Debian or Ubuntu, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you know, of my um, 20 squillion packages <laughs> you probably don't ever feel you need to do that and well then that's fair enough and um, but even when I was using uh, Ubuntu in my days and Mint and all that I found that, that there were still times when I have to compile a package at some point for whatever reason anyway and especially as I'm using Slackware I certainly do compile a lot of packages although that's usually handled by build scripts but when there's none, of, none available you know you can there's probably some manual stuff to do so anyway there's a little program I've been using called source to package. It is what it sounds like. It basically is a little program that will auto configure and compile a source package and spit out a package in the end, an actual package for your uh, distribution. So in this case with Slackware, it will compile and build and spit out a package that's a .txz package uh, file format, which then I can use with my package manager to install into the system. Now, I guess if you haven't figured already, the advantage of this is pretty obvious. Normally when you compile a package, you know, you will sort of, from source, you will have an, a source folder which you will compile, or you compile the uh, program. And then you will, um, let's say, you would typically, you would go configure, you'd let it configure for your system and all that, you know. Uh, detect what your system has, import the features, that sort of thing. You would then run make, which would actually compile the program once it's configured, and then you'd usually go make install, which would install it to the rest of your system, to the you know the usual paths, the bin, the documents to the document folder, and the libraries and all that. Uh, of course, the downside to this is that um, those files get installed, but they're not going to be tracked by your package manager because it was never installed with an actual for an, with an actual package for your package manager. It, it's been manually done by you, and usually this means you have to leave your source folder, like you can see as an example here, a few folders here that I've left, and um, and you can keep them, and then of course you can go back into that folder if you need to uninstall the program. Usually, but not always, you can then go make uninstall and you can press that and then it'll uninstall the program for you but not every program has this and that can make getting rid of or keeping track of packages that you've installed from source a bit of a pain so that's what this little handy nifty program is all about source to package it is a tool for creating packages obviously from source code or other base material including version controlled sources and binary archives the core program is written in bash so it's it's simple and, and very native. There's not very there's not too many dependencies. It does run in the command line, so there's always a bit of command line stuff to do. But it's only usually you know one line or a couple of lines. And, you know it's it's pretty easy stuff. And it's supported by a small number of helper packages that are compiled for your system during the installation. It is not a package manager like RPM or a build mechanism like GNU Autoconf, but rather provides a bridge to go from one to the other as a package making tool. Pre-built packages are available for Red Hat and SUSE, so RPM, Puppy, so .pet, Slackware, and in my case, TGZ or TXZ, Debian Ubuntu, .deb, so that's good, and uh, BusyBox SlyTaz, which is a TAS package. So it can uh, you can get pre-built packages, and certainly out of the box, it can support these actual package formats. Um, and has a build script if you need to add it to your distro of choice. Anyway, so I highly recommend that the best idea for this program is to go to the quick start and uh, it'll give you a bit of a guide and there's tons of switches for it but the very basic use of it is very easy and I'll demonstrate that but I suggest looking at it yourself and getting to know the other commands if you need to. Once, uh, just uh, backtracking a little bit, installation, 
For installing this, again, the pre-built packages are available for Slackware, Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, and SUSE, Puppy, and a Slide has. So you can download these binaries right away, install them with your package manager, and you'll have sourced a package. Or, ironically, or not so ironically, you can compile it. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. So yes, a quick start guide's a good place to go, and then of course you've got a heap of other options if you want to, but the basic thing is you install it, you go to your command line, you'll run source to package dash dash setup, and that'll basically make it uh, set up for your system so it knows exactly which um, which packages it's going to be compiling for. Anyway, moving on. So once you've installed it, uh, let's see. You will go to your, let's say, wherever you've got your, your source package. So you've got your archive. I'll go to my source folder. Uh, delete this, this package because it's uh, an earlier example. Anyway, moving on. In this case, I'm going to use Skippy XD as, a, uh, as, a, as an example. It's a little source package. It's only, what, 23 kilobytes. Uh, if you want to know what Skippy XD is, I'll put a, a link in the description if you're interested. It's actually a little program that gives you an expose-like effect with a sh key shortcut. Um, for instance, I'm using XComp Manager as my compositioning manager, which is, you know, it's, it's obviously not comp, it's not, not KWIN, it doesn't have any native expose effects. And so I had to add one in, but it, you'll see here, um, yeah, or a better example, open up a few programs, it gives you a little a little thing. It does tend to show widgets as well, which is a bit weird, but other than that, it does give you an expose-like effect. So that's pretty cool. So if you want something like that, that's lightweight and easy, that's something to look into. Anyway, so compiling it. So what I would do here is I would go to where it's located and you can either navigate to that folder with your terminal the normal way, you know, CD and all that. Or in my case, I'll right click and I'll go open terminal here. Anyway, now source to package really is simple in the basic use of it. Now normally source to package will build and spit out the final uh, final package in the temp folder. But Instead, what I do is source the package, so this is the name of the program. I go dash capital CWD, which means current working directory. That means it'll build the actual, it'll unzip, it'll un unarchive your source package and build it within the same uh, directory, which I just want to do because it's easy to manage. I can just delete it right from this current directory. And finally, dash capital C, which similar to CWD, but this does, it actually makes the program spit out your your final package in this location as, as well in this current location which means I can then run my install uh, package in my, my package managing tool to install the package right from here instead of going hunting for it in the temp folder and then simply all you do is run it is type in the name of your package so that's atar.bz2 source folder then you press enter so source the package dash cwd dash capital c which this is my choice, of course, but I just think it's the best just to do it in the current directory, and here we go. Press enter. And then it'll simply, it'll do all the uh, all the the making and configuring for you. Um, you know, you can uh, tell the program to output more information if you want it, but otherwise it tells you enough without telling you everything that you would normally see if you're doing it manually. So it, it extracts, and you can see up here two folders have appeared. One is the source folder that's been untarred that you would normally see if you did it manually. And so it goes through the process. And then finally, it is basically it has built the program in a fake jail route, basically. Instead of actually, it says it's running make install here, but it hasn't actually installed in your system at all. It's it's done in a fake version, uh, uh, basically a fake root, a fake install, and, and simply what it's done is installed to a local folder over here, and then it's tarred up that folder, or compressed that folder into your package of choice. In this case, it's compressed it and made it into a .txz file which is of course the file format uh, for packages in Slackware. So this is actually a ready-made package now, which I can install with my package manager. So I would simply go into root now, and then go install, install package, skippy xd, dash air, let's see, just, yep, dot, dot uh, txz, and that'll install it, and then that way, skippy xd has been installed via our package, and that means that if I ever want to install it, I can simply just go to my package manager and uninstall it like I would anything else. So it's a lot cleaner, uh, simple, etc., etc. 
Uh, before you install it though, I suppose the thing worth noting is, like I said, this directory is basically the uh, is what it ends up compressing into your final package. What's so handy about the fact that it leaves these packages, uh, these directories behind, these these you know, building packages, uh, building directories, is that you can go into here and you can see whether it actually will likely work. And what I mean by that is you can go into this directory and you can see user bin, etc. You can see the documents. And basically what this means is that what you see in here is exactly what this package would look like if you were to somehow un uncompress it. So you know here is exactly what's going to be in this package. So I can see that the user and the documents, are th the bin files are there, the documents are there, the descriptions are there. I know that in theory, if all went well, the configuring process, it should work. So yeah, that's as simple as that, and I would recommend if you're doing a bit of compiling, you want to try something a bit different, a tool that just makes you know, a bit less typing, a bit less uh, work, especially if you're doing a lot of packages. Um, it's something worth looking at. Uh, it's worth noting it's not foolproof. Uh, I've had some problems with certain, uh, certain, certain packages from source that have fancy Python scripts or whatever. You know, instead of the the typical make file processes, which um, it doesn't always handle, but like I said, it's very basic use, it's pretty handy, it generally works okay. It detects whether you're running a 64-bit system and will tell automatically tell the the program to compile and uh, install to your 64-bit library directories and that sort of thing. And so it really, it, it really, it, it's really quite handy and yeah. Anyway, I think that's about it. So yeah, oh yeah, basically, once you've got your package you've installed, you can safely delete these directories that's left behind once you're satisfied. Uh, same with the source, if you no longer need it, you can delete it. And then yeah, you've got your package and that's done. So yeah, really handy. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, any questions, feel free. Rate, comment, subscribe. Yeah, thanks a lot guys.